Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax Garage. If you saw my last video, I did some final work on my 2020 Ford Expedition with the FX4 package. I'm heading out on a road trip, so I needed to do some things. So if you want to check that out, go check that out. But today, as I mentioned in my last video, we've got some uh, projects to work on on the camper, the RV. A couple little things here. Uh, I need to do some maintenance with the rubber, the, the slide, you know, make sure everything's working. Um, I'm also going to caulk around these seams. I've seen a lot of videos online about water leaking into the cabinets there. Uh, so I want to make sure that's all sealed up. I got to mount my snow shovel here. I've got this uh, wireless propane monitor uh, to make sure my tanks are all good. And you know, this is very important when it's cold outside. I need propane. I've got to uh, fix some outlets that I put next to my bed. And then if you saw my last video as well, I upgraded the lights on the Expedition, only one side to see if it was worth it, so we got to finish that up. So if you want to watch that, stick around and enjoy. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a long time subscriber, always good to have you back. Over the last, I don't know, six months, I've been building my Jeep Gladiator in the back there. I'm putting a lift on it soon. I just haven't got to it. I built out my wife's 2020 Ford Expedition. I lifted it, different tires, uh, winch, lights, the whole shebang there. And now uh, I also spent about 400 hours building out this camper. Uh, this thing is completely off the grid capable. Uh, but I have done zero videos on that because they will start after this trip. But let's first off start with the finishing the headlight upgrade to this side of uh, the expedition i did that side yesterday you'll see that in the video uh it's a quick simple fix i do think these ones are much better there'll be a link down below if you want to check those out but all the videos about how to build this out uh, are coming soon um i've i know these inside and out now i've done everything from electrical on here to plumbing to adding more tanks to everything i mean there's not a and there's not a bolt i haven't touched on this so if you have questions or if you want to do a specific project feel free to ask me below if i have uh, done something or if you want to see something i'm going to start doing all the videos in about a week or two about everything i've done here and i'll prioritize the videos based on requests so I've got solar system on here, I've got heated tanks, I've got bigger propane tanks, I've got generators, I've got inverter. <laughs> I've done a bunch. There's still a couple more things I want to do, but you know, I also want to use the camper. Alrighty guys, those are all done. Pretty straightforward, simple job. Uh, just so you know, the ones, I'll put a link down below to the first version of lights I did. They're fine, they're just, you know, bleh, for 20 bucks, I guess. These ones are 150 bucks. Um, they are like double or three times the weight, so maybe more quality build, who knows. Anyways, on to the RV. Let's figure out how to uh, lubricate the slide. That way we don't run into is any issues there. All right, well, I'm using this and it says shake and then just spray and apply. It says it does not attract dirt, so that's good. It says it dries in seconds. Doesn't look like it will. That's what it says. I'm gonna do that side oh, up there too once I get a ladder because my shortness does not help me at all. While I was up there I noticed you can't even see it that's how bad it is. There's a screw right there that's actually pulled through the rubber so I'm gonna draw that out put a, a stainless steel washer there and then again on this side it hasn't happened there yet you can see the screws in oh you can actually see that screw just so it doesn't rip the the rubber more then i'm going to make the slide go in and out a couple times so just once i guess in and out and then we can get you know the gears lubed as well all right that is done now for you guys that do not rv uh let me show you how you put the slide in it's pretty straightforward so that's what the slide looks like uh, out. Gives you more space in here. Let me just move uh, the kids stuff, and then I can slide it in. And you wanna turn the power onto the slide and just hit in. And now, it slides in uh, for travel. Now some slides block your access to the rear. The reason I got the, this camper was because we still have access to the bathroom when it's all the way in. And if we have to uh, sleep in a parking lot like a Cracker Barrel or Walmart, 
we still have access this is a murphy bed fold down and yeah so that's it now i'm gonna and that's the outside so that's what we just lubed now i'm gonna extract it and that should have helped lubricate the gears there so i have a lot of these uh, rubber seals uh one compartment here one completely on the other side um one on this door and then one on the door i'm gonna take this uh, rubber seal conditioner and you just spray it on uh wipe it off and you should be good Alrighty guys, I've conditioned all the seals. They're looking good. They're just gonna air dry and while they air dry I'm gonna take uh, some uh, alcohol and uh, Clean up the dust off of the, all the the trimming here uh, As you can see right around there and I'm going to re caulk it with This it works down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. It is now 45 So that should work out perfectly let me show you what I'm working with here guys. Okay, these all look fine. I'm just gonna add another coach here, but if you look here There's no seal right there I don't know if you can tell but water will come rolling down the sides Inside here then it goes on top of the wheel well Inside and then leaks inside I've seen a lot of posts about that uh, You know RVs are not known to be quality made um, But it's not hard to get them up to par uh, I would say, you know, an extra four hours of work once you get the RV of just making sure things are done right uh, is going to save you a lot of time and trouble. Sure, it's warranty, sure it can get fixed, but then you can't use it, then you have to take it back, it's a hassle. So these are simple just things that you should do. I wanted to do it earlier, but I was doing other things and then it got extremely cold and obviously you can't do this when it's extremely cold. So that's why I'm doing it now. Luckily, I didn't have any leaks that I know of, but this is preventative. So let's get that done. That is done. I've done all of the seams um, for the doors and the wheel wells. So that's all set. Now on to, uh, let's do this uh, propane um, gauge, then we'll hang the shovel, and then one more thing I forgot. I have another camera here. When I was installing this camera on the rear, I have cameras all the way around, but when I was installing the camera on the rear, I only had the circle cameras, and it doesn't go down enough to point right here. So that's good for when you're driving on the highway, but I'm gonna install this one um, I guess right under the spotlight or maybe right next to it. I don't know and if I want to Have one camera the problem is my monitor can only do four cameras. So I'll either have to have a camera that's facing far back or a camera that's facing down and I guess I'll just manually change them back and forth until I find a better solution but this one will be pointing down so when I'm backing into campsites more often than not, I'll probably have this one. I don't really care what's behind me. Um, unless, you know, maybe I'm, I'm going in a convoy. I'll use the other one, then I can see where people are. Anyways, let's jump on to the next project. I have uh, hooked these up to my phone. Uh, and then this is a module you can put inside. Uh, basically, it tells you if the tank's empty. You got two tanks there. You set it up. So here are my two tanks. I have this visual gauge. And they have... I'm not happy with those. So this one says it's empty. This one says, you know, this range is pretty crazy. So I probably need to go get these filled right now. Then I can test out those gauges. So let me jump on and do that. All right, before I go fill it up, I actually want to see what the gauges say. So this is kind of cool um, in the back here. Let me just remove this. So there's a little this is, those are magnets. This is a little piece of rubber. It says you need to put dielectric grease on this rubber so it can send whatever signal it needs to through the bottom of the tank. So this one's the extremely empty one. Sorry, the battery died. So you gotta clean the bottom here. And then you gotta stick this dead center here. And now you stick it vertical. <clears throat> and let's see what the phone says this one is saying it's 37 percent full and this one is empty i know this one's completely empty it's super light so unfortunately the hardware store near me um 
charges you for a complete refill on the tanks. They don't charge you per gallons used. But since I'm going on a trip now, at least uh, I need one completely full and one 60% uh, full. I'm going to buy a, a third a 30 pound tank so I can leave it at my house and just exchange them at my house and use it all the way down. So if I'm going on a weekend trip, I can use the emptier one and try to wear it all down. But anyways, let's go get those filled up. Paint tanks are filled. You see, this is why I don't like these gauges. It's not like it gives you, oh, it's all the way filled. It's just low, whatever. These are 100% fill. Let me show you on my app here. You see, it says full, full. Um, and then you get, you can use the app or you can use this. I just mounted it right here. So you tap it once, it says full. Tap it once, it says full. So that should be good. The reason I didn't get this in the beginning was batteries don't do well in the cold and I only cold camp. So I'll be interesting to see how long these batteries last. Uh, that's why I didn't buy it initially. I've seen good reviews on these. But no, well, I'll keep you posted. It's got great reviews as it stands. All right, on to the next project, which is going to be uh, installing this backup camera. All right, guys, so this is why I like this system. I put this inside as my security system when I'm in the camper, but it's also wireless, so I leave it in the car when we're driving. Uh, this was the rear camera. I just had to uh, unplug the current rear camera and then just plug in the new one. And then there's a simple pairing button you just hit and it pairs. I don't think there's a way to put five cameras on there. One day I'll figure it out. But now I'm just gonna leave that top one attached, figure out where to mount this bottom one so it can face right about here so I can actually see um, where I am parking. So let's jump onto that so we can move on to the next project. This camera is done. It is pointing right down here to the point where I can just see this winch so that's perfect there's no way i would ever be able to get the other camera down at this angle that is good um now people may ask why didn't i just use the power that was included in the, the voyager there i have the ability to turn off all the power to the cameras because i'm boondocking i want to be able to shut down everything uh, and I also installed four cameras. Now, when I was just up there, I saw my solar panels are pretty dirty. So, let me just climb up there, uh, wash them off and put some uh, water repellent on them. And then we can move on to the next project, which will be mounting the shovel. And then inside we will put the subwoofer. All right, guys, I'm using my phone right now, but you can see there's still some snow left. Uh, we had about three feet of snow on here and nothing happened, but you can see how dirty the solar panels are. So I'm just gonna take some soapy water, wipe them down, and then I'm gonna put some uh, repellent on. Let's see how that works. All right, those are the three panels and look how dirty the rag is. So clearly they needed a wipe down. If uh, any of you are wondering, these are three 190 watt panels. I might get a fourth one for over here. Alrighty, all cleaned off and ready to soak up the sun down to the bottom. Now to mount the shovel, you see I have uh, bolt cutters and whatever here. I'm going to mount it right here, just like this. Um, and that should be completely out of the way. So let's get it mounted. It's a pretty simple install. I guess I can just tighten it a bit. It doesn't really make a difference. I'm not in here when this thing's driving down the road. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, these two ports don't work. This is an on off switch. This is right next to my bed. I sleep here. This is a USB and this is a, a DC plug. So while I'm back here, I have the replacements. Um, so I'm just gonna remove them. I don't know why they burnt out. If you guys have any suggestions as to why they burnt out, they worked and then they just stopped working. Maybe just bad quality. Anyways, let's get that done. All right, this is where it is. This is a pretty crappy mount. I'll fix that another day. Um, but these are the bad ones. I'm just gonna swap them out and double check it all works. The moment of truth, cell phones plugged in, wireless monitors plugged in, and the Garmin inReach. Let's hit this power switch. All righty. All getting power. Power, power, and charging. Nice. Okay, so I've got this little tiny sub 
uh, woofer or speaker. Behind here, there are uh, there's a place to put some speaker wires and it says uh, some subwoofer. Obviously you need an amplifier to get real bass. I'm not looking to get real bass. I'm just trying to get a little bit of bass. So before I figure out where I'm mounting this, I'm going to remove this panel and these things just clip off right here. And then you can get to the screws in here and it just pulls out. So I'm going to find a, a CD, plug it in um, and see what it sounds like with and without the sub. All right, so that's the speaker. That's where you hook up uh, the little sub. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, there's like a 1% difference in uh, sound, which no one will be able to hear. Um, I am not going to play the music because then this video gets copyright, but I will turn the music off and there's a piece of dirt in there and you'll be able to see it bouncing. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, actually connect this with uh, wire connectors and probably I'm just going to double side tape it to this counter here or to the back there or just honestly leave it in there um, and see if, you know, it does a difference. The main reason I wanted it was for movies, uh, not really music because anyways, let's wrap this up. Hey guys, well, the bass actually sounded uh, maybe 3% uh, better when I closed everything up because it's inside of that compartment. So I think the, the little subwoofer thingy, it's an 8 ohm, cost me like 5 bucks. So for 5 bucks, why not? Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for following me along today. Um, maybe it's a boring video. I'm sorry for that. But all the videos about how to build this out uh, are coming soon. Um, I've I know these inside and out now I've done everything from electrical on here to plumbing to adding more tanks to everything I mean there's not a and there's not a bolt I haven't touched on this so if you have questions or if you want to do a specific project feel free to ask me below if I have uh, done something or if you want to see something I'm gonna start doing all the videos in about a week or two about everything I've done here and I'll prioritize the videos based on requests so I've got solar system on here I got heated tanks I've got bigger propane tanks I got generators I got inverter <laughs> I've done a bunch there's still a couple more things I want to do but you know I also want to use the camper so thanks a lot for tuning in Feel free to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see with the camper, the gladiator, the expedition, or anything. But until next time, I'll see you then.